Books make you hope. Books make you dream. Books make you laugh. Books make you scream. This is the Books That Make You Show. Discussing books with authors and experts, unraveling the inner pages of all the books that help make us who we are. Hosted by Desiree Duffy. Gather around, everybody. We're going to have a bookish good time with a very special edition of Books That Make You. We are talking about books that make you build your 2020 TBR. Yeah, it's TBR time. Are you ready? Or are you asking, what's a TBR? It's your to-be-read list. And this time of the year is the perfect time to plan your 2020 TBR. What books should you be reading? How do you select books for your TBR? This year, or any year, or any time actually, should you read outside of your favorite genre? Or do you want to stick to something that's more tried and true? What authors have books coming out in 2020 that you should be planning for? All will be revealed in this very special edition of Books That Make You, the TBR edition. Tips. (coughs) All will be revealed in this special edition of Books That Make You. It's the TBR show. All right, let's roll up our sleeves and get to it. Mm -hmm. Gonna start with the basics. Tips for creating your TBR. Just like art, there's really no right or wrong way for you to build your TBR. You might write down books as you hear about them. Maybe you add them to your OneNote or a list on your phone or you start a list in your journal. You could spend some time and do some research, painstakingly looking up just the right books that you want to read. Maybe you're watching for new books from your favorite authors. Especially if you're in the middle of a series, you can't wait for that next one to come out, right? Maybe you're just flying by the seat of your pants and you just list off the books as they pop into your head. However it is that you decide to make your TBR, here's a few things for you to consider because this is fun, right? Okay, tip number one. Start with a number. If you read an average of one book per month, then you make a list of 12 books. And here's where it can get really fun. You can pick out a different book themed just for that month. For example, maybe in January you want to start off with a nonfiction book. Maybe something that helps you organize your life or think of things differently. It could be a motivational book or a a self-help book. And then in February, ooh. Valentine's Day, that's the perfect time to sink into a romance. So think about how you can theme your books. When it gets closer to Mother's Day, maybe you want to read that mother-daughter book. And in June, maybe it's a, a book about a father and a daughter or a father and a son. And then in the summer, oh, that's a great time to be stacking your list with those beach books, those summer reads. Maybe it's a cozy mystery or a romance or something that's kind of fun. So Here's my best advice. If you read a certain amount of books on average, start with that number and then fill it in. Maybe you read an average of two books per month. Well, then you get to have a TBR list of 24. And just keep in mind all of those hot times of the year where you can add in certain books that fit just right. Number two on our list of things to do to make your TBR. List your must-read books first, and then spread them out. For example, if you know that the third book in a favorite series is coming in March of 2020, make sure you put that book down, because that's something that you know you want to read. So figure out which books are the ones that you just have to have on your list. 
and then you can add other books to it. For example, maybe you're thinking, okay, I have to read at least two classics. Well, make that a priority. So you start your, your TBR by making it as a list of priorities, and then you can fill in as you go. Another tip for making your TBR, mix it up. Okay, here's the deal. If you only read nonfiction, then add some fiction to your list. Break out a little bit. If you have been immersed in science fiction and fantasy forever, then it's time to add some true crime or maybe poetry to your list. Read outside of your comfort zone and see if you find another author or a different genre that you love. You know, we tend to focus on what we know. It's like going to your favorite restaurant and ordering the same delicious risotto dish every single time. It's safe. You know you're going to love it, and you have no desire to ever experiment. But if you don't, well, how are you ever going to know how good that restaurant's pasta is if you're always having the risotto? Am I right or am I right? So whatever you do, make sure you mix it up. At least salt and pepper a few books that you would never think of reading. Now, some of the ways that you can do this, let's dig deep, deeper into those tips. How about if you ask friends for recommendations? And the fun thing is then you can give them yours. Chances are, if you're a book lover, you have bibliophile friends who can enlighten you with their favorites while you share yours with them. Maybe you could make it fun and do a white elephant style book exchange with your friends. That's really going to force you to read something unexpected. And it's a great excuse to get together with all of your friends and fellow book lovers. Here's another way you can do it. Okay, how about if you ask the very last person that you would ever think of asking for a book suggestion? What am I talking about? Think of that quiet guy at work who never really talks to anyone. Or the lady that you see on the bus every day. Start a conversation with somebody that you never really talk to and ask them about the books that they're reading. Get ideas from them. Not only is it a great way to get book suggestions, things that you never would have thought of, well, it's a great way to make friends as well and to see the world through somebody else's eyes. Classic books. This tip is something that I'm going to really insist on because it's so important to add a dash of the classics from time to time. It's easy to focus on the new authors and the new books, but adding several classic books is a great way to get that book that you've always meant to read read. Maybe there was something that you missed in English class. Everybody always talks about Hamlet. Maybe for some reason you just missed Hamlet. Well, now's the time to read that. The Bronte Sisters. Dig through a list of classics and find something that, for whatever reason, you missed or something that you want to reread because classics on a TBR is just the icing on the cake. Book clubs. This is a great tip for finding ways to read different books. It's, it's a steady stream of new books because every few weeks or month or however many times the book club meets and has new books, you're going to get a new book that you're reading. And if you've never been in a book club, Consider joining one. That's a great New Year resolution, right? The books that you read might be unexpected or just what you've always wanted to read. Either way, you're going to have great bookish conversations, find new friends in book clubs. You can't go wrong with them. One more tip. Visit the Books That Make You website. That's what we're all about. We're always discovering new authors for you and talking about books. There is a monthly book list, an article that always gives you new reading suggestions. And there's just so many stories and articles for you to explore, interviews with authors and book contests and fun things to do as well. So check out the Books That Make You website at booksthatmakeyou.com as you write up your TBR. All right. 
Now for the fun part. Now that you have some ideas on how to create your TBR, how about some practical book recommendations for 2020? This year is going to be a great year for books. There are so many good ones coming out. Not to mention books that have been out already for a year or two or even more. Don't let some of those slip by you either. Now that they've been tried and true, they're also great to add to your list. So I put together a mixture of different books, and here's just a few that you can consider for your TBR 2020. Number one, Sarah Winokur and Double Blind. Get ready for a Nordic thriller. This is coming March of 2020. In it, a young boy disappears in the chill of North Iceland. Then, 20 years later, a mysterious poem lands on the desk of his twin sister. She happens to be a forensic geneticist. And the poem rekindles her hopes that maybe somehow, through some miracle, her brother might still be alive. And then she starts to unravel the clues. More poems arrive, and they bring just dire consequences for anybody who receives them. This book is a little like The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo meets The Da Vinci Code. It's a must for fans of mysteries and thrillers. That's Sarah Winokur and Double Blind. Number two on the list, Cheryl Benko and The Last of Will. Now, this book came out a year or two ago already, but it's one that is just getting better and better. It's an award winner, a coming-of-age story, and it is capturing the attention of young and old. Cheryl, by the way, is a magnificent storyteller, and she's in the film industry. She's worked on films like Tombstone, The Titanic, and Glorious Bastards, all sorts of great films. So she really has worked some, with some of the very best in storytelling. In this book, teenaged Greer must travel across the country with her cemetery-working dad to deliver the ashen remains of this guy named Will. And along the way, she realizes what's important. And she has a lot of laughs and sheds a lot of tears. Trust me on this one. You're going to laugh out loud and you will adore this page turner. Talking about a father-daughter relationship book, mm-hmm, that's right. This is a great one to read right around Father's Day to give as a Father's Day gift. Oh yeah, the possibilities are endless with Cheryl Benko's and The Last of Will. Okay, I promised you that we should have at least one classic on our list, so... The books that make you recommendation for your TBR is George Orwell, 1984, a novel. Published in June of 1949, the story takes place in the then-imagined future of the year 1984, when much of the world has fallen victim to war and government surveillance and propaganda. Everybody feels claustrophobic and... You've heard the term, Big Brother is watching, right? (laughs) This is where that came from. This was Orwell a few decades off of the predictions of the real future, right? Because maybe 1984, a novel, is more relevant today in 2020 than it ever was before. So if you're going to read a classic or reread a classic, then check out George Orwell and 1984, a novel. Number four on our list, N.J. Ayuk and Billions at Play, the future of African energy and doing deals. Building on the success of his first book, which was titled Big Barrels, African Oil and Gas and the Quest for Prosperity, N.J. Ayuk in Billions at Play, the future of African oil and doing deals gives a unique take on what leaders and investors, business people, can do to build success in this complex business. There is just so much at stake. And political junkies, those interested in energy, interested in the environment, and the future of our world, 
should read this eye-opening book. You're going to see how China and Russia are already taking advantage of African energy and how the U.S. is being left in the dust. Yeah, we shouldn't let that happen. Billions at Play hit number one spots on Amazon bestsellers lists in African politics, in oil and energy, and much more. And you will see why when you grab Billions at Play by N.J. Ayuk. Number five on the list is David Ruggiero's and a wistful tale of gods, men, and monsters. Can a village be inherently evil? Welcome to Brunswick, New York, population 4,941. There, a young William Willowsby must battle evil forces that have been shielded by the locals for generations. On the outskirts of the town is the abandoned Forest Park Cemetery, which is a real place, by the way, and it's supposed to be haunted, and it inspired this fictional story. All things wicked just seem to revolve around this old graveyard. The book is a not-too-scary read that you can share with the family. That's David Ruggiero's A Wistful Tale of God's Men and Monsters. And this one hit number one on the horror bestsellers list on Amazon as well. Number six, Veronica Roth, Chosen Ones. Oh, yeah, you recognize Veronica Roth, don't you? She's the author of the YA Divergent series, and this is her debut novel, adult novel, about the aftermath of a group of five teens who saved the world. And essentially, it's asking the question, where do we go from here? Fans of Divergent need to grab their copy of Veronica Roth and The Chosen Ones coming out in 2020. Nonfiction books, mm-hmm, got to have a few of them. Number seven on the list is Malcolm Gladwell and Talking to Strangers. Talk about a great way to kick off the year. Because this book came out in 2019, it's available now, and it's definitely one that you could add to your January list because it's going to give you insights on how to do just that talking to strangers, something that maybe we should really start thinking about more. How did Fidel Castro fool the CIA for a generation? Why did Navelle Chamberlain think that he could trust Adolf Hitler? Why are campus sexual assaults on the rise? Do television sitcoms teach us something about the way we relate to each other that isn't true? Mm Mm-hmm. Find out in this New York Times bestseller. Something is very wrong, Gladwell argues, with the tools and the strategies that we use to make sense of people we don't know. And because we don't know how to talk to strangers, we are inviting conflict and misunderstandings that, in ways that have a very profound effect on our lives and our world. This is a must-read nonfiction book for your list at it. Malcolm Gladwell, Talking to Strangers. Number eight on the list, Sue Monk Kidd, The Book of Longings. You'll probably recognize Sue Monk Kidd from her critically acclaimed novel, The Secret Life of Bees. Yeah, that came out in 2003. In her fourth novel, The Book of Longings, she takes readers all the way back to the first century in a tale about a young woman who meets 18-year-old Jesus. Yes, that Jesus. This is going to be provocative. Get ready. That's The Book of Longings by Sue Monk Kidd, coming out in 2020. Number nine on our list, J.M. Kelly and Monster on the Moors. Ooh, this is such a fun one. Perfect for middle grade, YA fans, and for people who are just plain young at heart. This book is the second by J.M. Kelly. The mystery is an homage to Sherlock Holmes. In it, Bobby Holmes, get it? Bobby Holmes and his cousin, Brenda Watson, and their friends are embroiled in a deadly mystery in the North York Moors of England. An old beggar warns Bobby to stay away. 
and another stranger appears to be at the center of this mystery, you're going to just relish in the relationship between these kids, the fun that they have solving the mysteries that are put in front of them. That's J.M. Kelly, Monster on the Moors. Number 10 on our list, Brandon Cross, The Legacy Series, Book One. This novella series is like nothing that's been done before. It's based on the real correspondence in the infant days of the internet in the 90s. It's the story of a boy who is lonely, he's abused, and he's terminally ill. The thoughts that he shares with his online friends will give you insights into the mind of a child going through hell. But in the end, there's a positive message of hope and even happiness. Props to author Brandon Cross for telling this tale through message board style writing. It's really going to captivate readers. It's different. It's a fast read. And book one releases in early 2020 with more quick reads to follow throughout the year. So if you want a new book series, this is the one. Brandon Cross and the Legacy Series. Book one coming out 2020. A must add to your TBR. Number 11 on the list is Bilal Alaji and This Ain't My Life. Look at the world through someone else's eyes. That is something you really should do at least once on your TBR. And this is just the memoir to add to your TBR to do just that. Growing up Muslim, Bilal experiences many trials through his youth, with his father leading him down an arduous path. As he fights and claws his way out of every obstacle, he relies on his faith to pull him through. Bilal shows his willingness to never give up on finding his true purpose. As he goes through failed marriages, criminal proceedings, the shelter system, and lost jobs, Bilal refuses to believe that this is the life he was meant to live. He challenges his reality and what he believes by stating, This ain't my life. It's a chart topper on Amazon in Islam biographies and rap music and something you gotta add to your TBR. Bilal Alaji and This Ain't My Life. Twelve on the list, Avery Song, Tracker Hive Academy Year One. Start this powerful series and get ready for more books in 2020. Follow 18-year-old Jade Storm the youngest recruit to become a tracker. Her goal is to cruise through the four-year academy, but the troubled four, Zeke, Zion, Zachary, and Zeus, well, they have other plans for her. Find out who really makes the rules in this new adult romantic fantasy. Great summer read, perfect for the beach. That's Avery Song, Tracker Hive Academy, year one. And the lucky number 13 on our list, Ransom Riggs, the Conference of the Birds. Ransom Riggs is continuing Jacob's journey in the Conference of Birds. This is the fifth installment of the Miss Peregrine's Peculiar Children series. Oh, yeah, you know that series. Who knows where this adventure is going to take Jacob? But there's one sure way that you can find out. That's by putting the Conference of the Birds, Ransom Riggs, on your TBR. And finally, the last suggestion, number 14 on the list, is go out and look for other books. Follow the hashtag TBR or hashtag TBR2020. Use that on social media, Twitter or Facebook, Instagram. Find out what other people are adding to their TBR. That's the surefire way to add great books to your list. Most importantly, have fun with this. Reading is something that you should enjoy every moment when you can. Whether you're listening to the books, you're curling up with one of those paper books, or you're reading on your device, make sure that you enjoy putting together your TBR and finding new books to read in 2020 and beyond. Because, like I said, there's no reason you can't start a TBR at any time of the year. Thank you, everyone, for joining me. My name is Desiree Duffy, and I've enjoyed this very special edition of Books That Make You, the TBR 2020 show. 
And you can always find out more on the website, bookstatmakeyou.com. You can also follow us. We're on Facebook and Instagram. We have a hashtag. It's hashtag B-T-M-Y. Stands for Books That Make You. And we have lots of fun things happening all the time. Book giveaways, contests, and so many great articles and recommendations for our authors. Once again, that's BooksThatMakeYou.com. And you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. You can sign up for our monthly newsletter. Until next time. Please enjoy putting together your TBR for 2020 and enjoy all of the books that make you exactly who you are. The executive producer for Books That Make You is Desiree Duffy, produced and sound mastered by Phil Jean Grande, engineering by Dave Nabox, social media and promotion by Bree Sweeter. For more, visit booksthatmakeyou.com.